How should the next generation of pastors prepare for ministry in an increasingly post-Christian Western world? I think you have to begin by asking how should the next generation of pastors prepare for ministry, period, and then add in the particular cultural specification. Um, I would want to argue that every generation of pastors needs to get uh, the best biblical theological training possible. And what's possible is going to depend on where they live and how much money they have and access to good schools and uh, all the rest. Um, but, but it takes time to learn the Word of God well and to develop the tools as much as they can to handle the original languages, to learn how to put together a sermon, how to apply the Word of God to the lives of people and so on. Um, that is always foundational. If you have a view of pastoral ministry that is deeply and essentially um, word-centered, so that in our counseling, in our preaching, in our Bible studies, in our evangelism, everything turns around the supremacy of God's authority as he has disclosed himself in his word, then word training in one fashion or another, including historical theology and biblical theology and all the rest, it turns first and foremost on learning to handle the Bible well. But then if you add in the cultural specificity, um, increasingly in a post-Christian world, uh, the people with whom we converse, the people to whom we minister, know less and less and less. Um, increasingly in university missions, for example, the people with whom I am speaking don't know the Bible has two testaments. Uh, they've never heard of Abraham. And if I mention Moses, uh, they're thinking of Charlton Heston or the latest cartoon figure. They're, they're, their categories are, are virtually devoid of any biblical content. That means one of the things that we have to do to train people well is to train people not only to understand the Word of God in its own terms with its own categories, but how to communicate this to people who know nothing. It means how to start farther back. Um, and that means some serious thought given how to talk, the, to talk about the Bible, to talk about Christ, to, to talk the Gospel up um, cross-culturally. That is, uh, outside the culture of the Christian Church to biblical illiterates in such a way that in the grace of God, many become Christians and then learn the Bible language and categories and so on. For the fact of the matter is that most of the, the broad themes that tie the Bible together, um, covenant, Christology, sacrifice, temple, priesthood, and so on, virtually none of them has any residence with modern secular America. And, and that means you might get all excited about the unique priesthood of Jesus and his connection with Melchizedek, but that doesn't really play well on Center Street in most of our um, towns. Yet at the same time, it must be got across to understand God as he has disclosed himself supremely in Christ Jesus. And so to learn not only what the Bible says, but to learn how to get that across to biblical illiterates in such a way that you are um, faithful to the text, but winsome and engaging, that is part of the challenge. You are no longer training for people who are biblically literate. That is crucial. And then on top of that, I would say, it becomes important to learn how to talk to people outside the camp, as it were. If you are, if you are able to talk only to Christians who have all of this vocabulary and everybody else makes you nervous, then he, how can you evangelize? How can you lead people to evangelize? You, you just get uncomfortable and tongue-twisted every time you meet with somebody who is an avowed atheist or uh, devil-may-care agnostic or w w whatever. So part of it is being put in the kinds of situations and contexts where you learn to be comfortable with just about everybody um, and, and, and yet still retain a, a, a Christian flavor in all that you say and do. That's part of what is necessary to do actual mission as opposed to uh, to re restricting yourself to nurturing the people of God who are already on the inside. Do you think there's one unique opportunity in our day, in our current cultural context, in explaining the gospel that uh, may be unique to the current context that wasn't this, the case in previous generations to help us make that bridge that you're talking about? Well, America's a big country for a start. You have to realize that there's a lot of difference between Tulsa, Oklahoma and Manhattan or the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. And so I'm really nervous about one-size-fits-all solutions. 
um, in terms of American history, this moment in history, uh, once you've moved outside the confessing church, is steeped in a degree of biblical ignorance that is pretty remarkable. But on the other hand, in world history, that's not unique at all. Every time you take the gospel to a country where the church is virtually unknown or where th Christians are thin on the ground, then th that's everywhere. Moreover, the, the notion of, um, of, of secularism that has little place for anything of robust Christianity but has a vague spirituality lurking in the background while nevertheless being pretty deeply committed to a a not very well thought through philosophical materialism, that's everywhere. That's not just in, in America. That's uh, everywhere in the Western world and in much of Europe and in some countries like Japan uh, with their own underlay of Confucianism or Buddhism or whatever, but still a remarkably, um, a, a remarkably committed world to philosophical materialism. Um, that, that's not unique at all. That, that has come around many, many times.